Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. So the last time we talked about Throne in Liberty, we left things on a fairly positive note. The game had at the time just recently released in Korea and buzz around the internet was overall generally good. Lots of positive first impressions and early reviews from people who had played the game. Primarily, this seemed due to some good improvements that were made to Throne in Liberty from its beta testing to full release. In fact, it seemed like many of the major uh, gameplay and systems complaints had been addressed. Come back at an overhaul from its previously static feel with almost no mobility to a more fluid and dynamic system more in line with other modern day tab target MMOs. As for content, it seems like much of what we were looking forward to was there. The massive open world with thousands of players all sharing a single server and everyone visible as there's no phasing. Open world public events, non-instance large-scale dungeons, solo challenge tower climbs, world bosses, open world PvP, tons of guild activities, and plenty of character and account progression for you to chase after. And then on top of that, they had removed the autoplay features that people complained about where you would just click a button and the game played itself farming and grinding for you while AFK. In doing so, they also retuned all of the progression and farming speeds to be more in line with the fact that people would actually be playing themselves. So things like the time it takes to level your character and skills, the amount of gold and materials required to craft, all of that was drastically reduced. As a result of these changes, along with the game's core foundation of systems, features, and content, as as I mentioned, resulted in an overall positive impression of the game in terms of what we were seeing from those early reviews and first impressions. But surprise, uh, things haven't gone particularly well in the time since then. The biggest clue that things aren't looking so good for Throne in Liberty actually comes directly from the developer themselves. So recently, NCSoft released their financials reporting for the fourth quarter 2023, and they were not particularly great, revealing a 31% overall revenue drop in 2023 compared to 2022 with a 20% drop in the fourth quarter specifically compared to the year prior. Now, typically during these investor calls, NCSoft would also present earnings broken down for each individual game during the quarter. So for example, they would show exactly how much was earned from Guild Wars 2, from Lineage 2, from Blade and Soul, etc. However, this time around, they notably omitted this level of detail, not showing how much earnings came from each individual game. On top of that, the biggest thing that stood out during this presentation was the fact that that they didn't even mention Throne in Liberty, even though the game launched in Korea within this reporting window. Let me say that again. They are doing an earnings report talking about how much money they made for their games in the fourth quarter 2023. During that time, they launched a brand new game, Throne in Liberty, and they didn't even bring it up. They didn't mention the game at all whatsoever during the entire earnings report. Unsurprisingly, investors noticed this omission because of course they did. They spent a lot of money on the development of Throne in Liberty over the course of 10 plus years, mind you. The game finally released and they wanna know how well it did, but NCSoft doesn't even mention it. So towards the end of the call during the Q&A portion, investors pressed them asking, what the heck? To which they responded by saying that Throne in Liberty had in fact underperformed, adding that they were working on trying to sort out the game's rough launch and make it better Better, but ultimately, they're more so banking on Amazon's global release to save the game. The TLDR of all of this is that Throne in Liberty launched in Korea. It did so poorly that NCSoft is basically writing it off and turning their sights to the global launch being handled by Amazon to recoup their cost and ideally earn some money. Speaking of earning some money, Let's get a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Luck Catchers 2, a multiplayer socio-economic MMO set in a vast world of magic, dragons, and flying ships. You can engage in a myriad of activities from mining rare resources and building cities to forming player alliances and battling pirates. Features include an immersive fantasy world full of fire-breathing dragons, other players, and magical artifacts to be discovered, dynamic world conflicts as you battle players and enemies for control over various territories. It's got unique travel mechanics as you explore the open world unrestricted using aircraft, choosing from a variety of classes and characteristics. You can establish and customize your own settlements in various locations along trade routes with access to cities, and there are tons of different events like the Grand Bastion Challenge, Territorial Wars, large-scale races, bounty hunting, and seasonal dragon migrations. If you'd like to learn more and check out Luck Catchers 2 yourself, you can use my link in the description below, and using the code FORCE will unlock some free in-game goodies. Alright, so back to Throne of Liberty. The game launches in Korea. It completely completely bombs, NCSoft doesn't even mention it in its earnings report, investors are upset, 
and they respond by saying, hey, we got the global release. It's gonna save us with the help of Amazon. Now, as much as we can totally go, haha, Amazon save your game, LOL, nice joke. The fact of the matter is both of the MMOs they've published while they have fallen off, they did launch with rather significant success. Both games are still in the top 10 all-time concurrent players on Steam with Lost Ark reaching a peak concurrent player count of 1.3 million and New World reaching one of 900,000. Those are very big numbers and those very big numbers translate to a heck of a lot of money and that is ultimately what the investors are concerned about although obviously the best case scenario would be continued success of their games to continue earning off of that investment coming from a game that wasn't even mentioned during an earnings call at this point I'm sure NCSoft's investors will take whatever they can get now this whole thing got me curious about the game's general popularity we know it's clearly not earning a lot of money but are people playing it well it actually seems to be the case. In fact, the game appears to be relatively popular, ranking among the top 20 played in PC bongs in Korea, which if you don't know, these are popular internet cafes filled of tons of computers and people regularly go here paying money to play games. The most recent numbers that I saw from last month actually placed Throne in Liberty just above Black Desert Online and Counter-Strike 2, and even a few spots above GTA 5 and Dota 2. While the game has clearly seen a dip in search interest globally since it released, it's also still trending above its pre-launch levels, which I would say is a good sign as well. So it appears like the game actually hasn't completely fallen off in terms of its player base and popularity, at least in terms of the Korean launch, but that is only a part of the equation. I'm also kind of curious how the community sentiment and thoughts on the game have changed within the months since it released. While those initial reviews and impressions did lean positive with people liking the gameplay and its content, there were some early concerns and those concerns appear to have only gotten worse. So for starters, we know that the game has pay to win elements. That was never in question. Uh, these were present at release and now a few months in, we do have a clear picture of the sort of impact that it has had. So like most free to play MMOs, Throne in Liberty has two currencies. There is Solent, the earned in-game currency, similar to say Lost Ark's Silver. And then there is Lucent, which is the purchased currency with real money, similar to Lost Ark's Gold. Now Lucent, that paid for premium currency can also be farmed in game in the sense that the items that you find while playing can then be sold in the auction house and in doing so that is exchanged for lucent that was purchased by other players so it is the case that not spending any real money yourself you can play the game acquire items and traits that you sell in that auction house to players who swiped for lucent and then they give you that lucent without you actually swiping now with lucent what you're able to do is basically purchase nearly everything in the game that pertains to player power and this is where the pay to win stuff comes in directly into play. So the two main things that people will use Lucent for and buying that premium using that premium currency is to buy the base level versions of gear but more importantly buy the materials that is used to upgrade that gear. In fact only using Lucent you can do the following. You can buy a base set of gear, you can purchase the materials to upgrade that gear including now even being able to buy the in-game currency of Solent which is used in that upgrade process process previously you could only earn that by playing but now with the purchase of certain items that can be broken down into Solent you can then basically convert that premium currency to the in-game currency so that uh, gate that previously existed is pretty much no longer there and then you will use those materials that you purchase as well as that Solent that you got by breaking stuff down to enhance your gear bumping it up to its maximum level all of this just by spending real money now this whole thing can be done as well entirely free to play but of course it will require much more time playing the game, grinding for Solent, grinding for the upgrade materials, and even grinding for items that you will sell for Lucent. People who are swiping can't get more powerful than free-to-play players, but they can reach that max gear level of power much faster and with less playtime. Almost, because it actually turns out that Throne of Liberty does have some anti-pay to win built into it. The total best in slot gear in this game comes from activities like defeating world bosses or doing dungeons, some of which some of these items are not tradable, meaning you can't buy them in the auction house. But even more so, most of these activities will be controlled by top guilds. It requires actually playing the game, being, being invited to those guilds, attending those events, and being rewarded that gear. So to get the absolute tip of the top best in slot stuff in this game, 
game, you actually need to play and be at these events, but more so you need multiple duplicates of this gear because to completely max it out, it's not something that you can purchase. It actually requires you merging them together. Also, part of Throne of Liberty's power progression involves upgrading your skills, and one of the items used to do these upgrades, parchments, can't be purchased either and is only acquired by playing. So these are two major elements of maxing out a character's power in Throne and Liberty that can't be paid for, at least currently, this of course could change. But honestly, from what I've heard, uh, this isn't even the real big problem with Throne and Liberty. The, the issue that the game is facing isn't even so much the pay to win aspect, because as I mentioned, free to play players can get just as far as pay to win players. People who pay can't get more powerful, they just get more powerful more quickly. But the biggest problem with Throne and Liberty right now is the botting. Apparently the game is absolutely completely and totally overrun by bots and that botting gives players a significant advantage which can we just take a moment to um I don't know I guess appreciate the irony here after NCSoft removed astral hunting which was their in-game built-in botting that they had and they did this due to community complaints following the uh, test last summer the game now it finds itself overrun by people just using external autoplay bots. And and how are those bots impacting the players? Well, this is how it works, basically. Uh, Throne of Liberty's endgame really primarily centers around competition between guilds and players in PvP and elsewhere with its ranking and leveling systems. So people who are using these autoplay macros and bots have been gaining a significant lead over those who don't, being able to constantly farm materials and currency, which is then used to feed into boosting their ranks and levels of their guild. And this matters a lot because the number one guild on every server gains exclusive access to a castle which if defended rewards them millions of solent and lucent and remember lucent is that premium currency in the game so guilds who are full of players that are using bots and farming 24 7 are able to climb the ranks get that number one spot and then if they defend their castle they are actually monetarily rewarded they're given the in-game currency as well as the premium currency and they got there essentially by chance cheating by botting. Now, just because a guild uses bots, it doesn't guarantee they're going to take the number one spot, but clearly it gives them a rather significant advantage over guilds that are full of players who aren't using bots because they have to put in significantly more time and effort. When you're playing against guilds full of bots, they are farming and climbing those ranks 24-7 while you're only doing it while you're playing. Now, obviously, actively playing players can be more efficient and effective at climbing the ranks, but if you have people who are combining, no lifing, but then whenever they do take a break and sleep, then botting, that does give them the edge and make it all the more likely that guilds that are exploiting this and using bots and autoplay macros have a big advantage to reach that number one spot to then control the castle, which if defended gives them that huge, huge in-game uh, benefit of all those extra currencies and other stuff that comes with it. And seeing as the end game in Throne of Liberty really centers around group content, and that's something else that you should know, this is very much a group and guild focused game, specifically guild PVE activities, guild PVP activities, open world activities with a guild. This isn't really a game tailored to the solo player, to the small group players. It's really all about big, large scale group activities. And all of this means Means players who are non-botting and guilds who are non-botting have a significant disadvantage on pretty much every server unless these bots are dealt with. I want to say here as well, I want to give a special thanks to Canon who really helped catch me up to speed on how things have been going for Throne in Liberty. If you guys are looking for more detailed coverage of the launch of the game and how things have rolled out since, definitely go check out his channel. He's posted quite a few videos. So with all that said, where does that leave us now? Well, I think on the plus side, it's great that Throne in Liberty sounds like it has good content and gameplay, that they're generally good. Even if nothing else changes between the Korean and global release, it appears like the game has plenty of interesting content, a unique, interesting world, lots of cool features, and it feels good to play, at least so I've heard, and that is all great news. When it comes to the pay-to-win features, well, they're frustrating being a free-to-play game. We do, of course, understand they have to monetize somehow, but obviously our preference, my preference, 
is they stay far away from be allowing you to purchase power. Well, they have not done that. You can buy most of the top tier gear, but at least swipers can't pay to become more powerful than free players, but they can in fact reach those upper echelons of power much quicker and with much less playtime. And the reality is I do not expect this to change from the Korean to global release. And as for the bots, like botting in any MMO, uh, this absolutely needs to be dealt with. I would say doubly so considering botting gives guilds that big advantage in Throne and Liberty, Liberty with again reaching rank number one more easily, controlling that castle and getting all of the rewards that come as a result. Now, news on the Western release of Throne and Liberty has been, let's just say quiet, with Amazon not publishing any updates since October 2023. It's been several months since we've heard any news from Amazon about the Western version of this game. I suspect when it does come out, it'll probably have a decently successful launch, especially considering Throne and Liberty is like one of two traditional MMOs that we're going to be seeing launching in 2024. There's just not a lot of new games to pick from this genre, and so when anyone does come out that looks even halfway decent, tends to draw in uh, quite a bit of uh, numbers because, yeah, people who like this genre want to try out new and interesting things. But I will say, if they don't change the pay to win, which I'm not expecting them to, and if they don't clamp down on these bots, which I know can be difficult to do, my guess is that Throne and Liberty does in fact follow a similar trajectory to Amazon's previous two MMOs. We'll see a big impressive launch with some huge concurrent numbers, lots of people checking the game out, followed by the complaints, followed by a fairly massive decline in the one to two months following. Uh, that is my estimated guess, my best guess, my best educated guess, <laughs> but uh, that could change. Who knows? Maybe they get rid of enough of the pay to win elements that it doesn't bother most of the global audience. Maybe they successfully deal with the bots and maybe we're just left with a great new MMO for people to enjoy. Keeping my expectations in check though, that what I just said is what I foresee will happen. I mean, hey, you know what? It's in Amazon's best interest. It's in NCSoft's investors' best interest if that isn't the outcome. So I hope, the they, I hope they take the steps to make it so that that's not the case. The games comes out, they make the necessary and changes and improvements so that it's a successful game that flourishes over time. We'll see how it all turns out though. With that said, that is gonna do it for today's video. Thank you all as always for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take it easy.